Well, President Trump re-designated North Korea as a state sponsor of terror. The rogue regime now joins Iran, Sudan, and Syria on the U.S. terror blacklist. The Trump administration also expected to announce new sanctions against the North. Secretary of State Tillerson says this new campaign is intended to pressure North Korea to curtail its nuclear ambitions. Listen. I think it, it is very symbolic on the one hand because it just points out again what, how, what a rogue regime this is and how brutal this regime is and how little they care uh, for the value of human life. Uh, so I think if, in that in and of itself, I think makes a strong statement of just the nature of this regime. And as I've said, the practical effects may be limited, but we hopefully we're closing off a few loopholes with this. Now for more on all of this is Christopher Swift, an attorney and a national security studies professor at Georgetown University. Thank you very much for Good talking to, to us. You, so North Korea now joins Iran, Sudan and Syria on this state sponsor of terrorism list. You see how well it's worked for them. Uh, but the president says that it should have happened a long time ago. It should have happened years ago. It absolutely should have been. Uh, but what difference will it make in the end? Well, in the end, it doesn't change very much legally or, or strategically. It's an appropriate move. This is a rogue regime that does bad things to good people for bad reasons. And I think the Secretary Tillerson was very clear about that, and the President was very clear about that. But in terms of the practical effect, look, being on the, the list of state sponsors of terrorism means you can't get U.S. arms exports. Well, the United States hasn't exported any arms to North Korea ever. Mm -hmm. You can't get U.S. foreign aid, uh, development aid or political aid. Well, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, you are subject to certain financial sanctions. Well, that's generally the case for most banks and most government officials in North Korea today. Uh, and then you're not allowed to get certain types of uh, dual-use exports, dual-use commercial products that could be modified for military purposes. You can't send that stuff to North Korea anyway. So legally speaking, practically speaking, strategically speaking, it's not much of a change. Symbolically speaking, it's important because it reminds the North Koreans that they reneged on a deal that they got into with the Bush administration back in 2008, and the United States takes it seriously when people cheat on their deals. Yeah, and you know, Trump's announcement opens North Korea to new U.S. sanctions as well. Um, we have seen some of the toughest sanctions under the Trump administration, uh, specifically also getting China involved in order to get mm -hmm. the banks uh, to put the clothes on North Korea. What else should we be seeing um, by adding North Korea to this list when it comes to sanctions, when it comes to legal liabilities? So it used to be that, that North Korea was treated very much the same way as Iran. And then in the late, late days of the Bush administration, the George W. Bush administration, uh, President Bush and Condoleezza Rice dialed that back a fair amount. Um, so these days, you can't do business with the North Korean government. There are a lot of bad actors in North Korea, and it's worth that you can't do business with who are individually sanctioned. And it's also worth knowing that anybody that's owned or controlled by the government in North Korea, you can't do business with. Yeah. That has the effect of basically blocking out the entire country for most things most of the time. Um, if, the, if the Trump administration were to take things to the next level, they'd probably impose something like the territorial-based sanctions that we see on Iran, in which case there's no exception to the sanctions. You, you, you look at the country, the entire country is sanctioned, not just the government and certain individuals or institutions within it. That's the direction I'd expect the Trump administration to take. It would align the approach we use on North Korea from a sanctions perspective with the approach we've used right. on Iran. Right now, we're treating North Korea the same way we we treat Syria, and it looks like the Trump administration is going to step that up. Okay. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, the move, mostly symbolic, likely isn't going to be preventing Kim Jong-un um, and his defiance in developing nuclear weapons. However, uh, you know, does this set up the U.S. to position itself to take harsher measures against the rogue regime? We've talked much about how the president has met with the, uh, the, the prime minister of, of Japan and um, met with South Korea and mm -hmm. their leaders in order to put the pressure on North Korea. Um, the missile defense program, for example, something that we need to amp up. Does that then and give us the footprint, if you will, um, in order to do that so we can protect these allies. So, so redesignating North Korea as a state sponsor of terror is an incremental step in the right direction in terms of the coordination of political, economic, military, and diplomatic tools. But if you look at what's really going to change North Korea at the end of the day, it's going to be economic pressure from China military pressure from the United States, and political changes within the country itself. Everything that we're doing to make sure that our allies have theater missile defense, that, that we're coordinated with Japan and South
South Korea to the extent that we can be uh, on, you know, responding to aggression if it happens in the future. All of those things are the normal things that we'd expect any administration to do, and I'm glad to see the Trump administration mm -hmm. doing them. But at the moment, we're sort of in a holding pattern with North Korea. You can turn up the pressure a lot, but unless you have economic pressure from China, military right. pressure from the United States, and political change within that country, you're not going to see this regime's behavior change very much, All at right. least not in the near term. All right. Christopher Swift, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming on.